everyone and welcome back to Atman Unlimited. Doing a little bit of house cleaning in the shop last week or two. So the machine's been a little bit idle. But uh, noticed a couple of videos on YouTube talking about collet holders and set screw tool holders and run out and pull out and some people have issues with pull out with collet holders and they don't like them. So I thought I'd just make a, a video and just talk about both collet holders, you know, specifically ER style collet holders, and then also uh, set screw style holders as well. So collet holders. If you are using collet holders, there is one tool that you must absolutely have in your shop to be successful and repeatable. And that's a torque wrench. If you're not using a torque wrench on your collet holders, you have no way to know how much force you're clamping that collet with. So using a torque wrench is very critical. The torque wrench will allow us to have repeatability and confidence that every time we put a tool in our collet, it will stay secure and it's not going to pull out. You will be surprised if you look up the torque specs for collet holders, how much torque they use. So for example, this is a ER32 collet holder. This collet nut wants to be torqued to 100 foot-pounds. That's typically what you tighten the lug nuts on a car to. It's a lot of torque. Notice how long this torque wrench is. You gotta put a lot of muscle into this torque wrench to hit 100 foot-pounds. A lot of people don't put the full torque on their collet holders and then their tools pull out while they're milling. Okay, so torque wrench and torque. Along with the torque wrench is a lot of times on the collet holders, you're gonna use what's called a crow's foot. Okay? Now the use of a crow's foot is just simply the fact that you've got this tool sticking out the end of it and you can't put a socket on it. It would be kind of unreasonable, especially if you got like a 12 inch long reamer or something. So a crow's foot is generally used to tighten the collet holders. Now when you use a crow's foot with a torque wrench, if you use it like that, this now becomes a torque multiplier because there's a longer distance between the rotational center axis of the nut and the actual axis where the torque is being measured. Okay, now there's this formula that takes into account the, the distance between this center point of rotation and this center point of rotation, and then it multiplies it by the angle, the cosine of the angle. Okay, so, and you can adjust your torque settings based on that. It's all well and good, but if you just want a simple way to solve this problem and not have to do any math, just turn your crow's foot 90 degrees. Because remember, that formula has the angle from the point of leverage and to the angle of the point of rotation here, okay? So this angle, and it's the cosine of that angle. So the cosine of 90 is zero. So if this is, 90 degrees, that equals zero. So whatever length this is, times zero is zero. So if you use your crow's foot at a 90 degree angle from the uh, plane of the lever, then you don't have to do any math. You can just set whatever torque you want and torque it and you'll have an accurate torque, okay? So don't use your crow's foot like this. You wanna use it at a 90 degree angle and then your torques will come out accurate. Now, if you have, if you have a you know, machine that has tool holders, you know, so this is a category 40 taper machine, this is CAT 40, uh, and somebody corrected me and I found out that CAT actually stands for Caterpillar, not category. Uh, long story there, maybe I'll do a video on it, but it's, it's pretty good history, it's kind of neat. Uh, in any event, we're diverging. Uh, these pole studs, want to be torqued, that you want to preload these threads at the end of your tool holder. 
A lot of people don't torque these. So that's another thing. We want to torque these down. And again, 76 foot-pounds. It's a lot of torque. Now granted, that's a very large thread in there. So, you know, it, you're not going to break it. 76 foot-pounds. Now, these pole studs are kind of a pain in the butt because they've got these wrench flats. Let's see if we can focus. There we go. So they got these little tiny itty bitty wrench flats. And if you try to use a crow's foot on that, all you're gonna do is break your knuckles. They have a solution for that. Here is a socket that is designed to tighten pole studs and you can order these from your tool suppliers. And they simply just go right over the pole stud and now you have complete and full engagement so you can properly torque your pole studs, okay? So ER32 collet, we said 100 foot-pounds. How do you put 100 foot-pounds while holding that tool holder? You need a tightening fixture. Absolutely, unequivocally, without a doubt, you need a fixture to hold your tool holders while you tighten them. Don't ever attempt to try to tighten a tool into a tool holder while it's in the machine. We don't want to do that. For one, we want our machine running making us money, right? We don't want a machine sitting there while we're tightening tools. And for two, you don't want to put, you won't be able to get the torque you need with it in the machine. The spindle locks don't lock that hard. They're just for orientation purposes. They're not to hold anything. And you're just not going to be able to get the correct torque. So tightening fixture is a must. So let's talk real quick about the other type of tool holder that's very common in the industry. And these, these are the set screw type holders, okay? So tool goes in, tighten the set screw, it's held in place. If you use a set screw type tool holder, make sure your tool has a flat ground on it. If it does not have a flat ground on it, you shouldn't be using one of these tool holders. The flat is what allows the set screw proper surface area and something to retain on, okay? If the tool that you're looking at does not is not listed in the catalog with a flat a lot of people call these Walden flats call your tooling manufacturer 99 percent of them will put this flat on there for a very nominal charge like you know seven bucks or something like that it's cheap so if you have a tool that doesn't have a flat and you want to use a set screw style holder you must have a flat on it if your tooling manufacturer does not want to put a flat on it for some reason, I haven't run into one yet, there are other tooling companies out there that are specifically in business to modify tools. So you can start out with a catalog tool, pay them a nominal fee, and they'll modify it however you want. There's also tooling companies that will specifically make you a tool to order. So if you have a very custom tool you want, you want a flat on it, tell them to put a flat on it. They're a couple of bucks to add, it's not bad. Okay. We'll go over to the tightening fixture and we'll talk about how to properly put these tools in so these won't pull out on you, okay? Because remember, the geometry of an end mill makes the cutter want to pull down and your work to pull up. So if you have any uh, uh, looseness in this tool or your collet holder, it's going to want to pull the tool right out of the tool holder. Let's go over to the tightening fixture and we'll put a couple of tools in and we'll go over some of these concepts. So here's my tightening fixture. I've got it bolted to my uh, lathe bench here, my little mini Atlas lathe. Uh, you guys saw that in the rebuilding video. Uh, I finally actually got it moved down so I can use it again, which is really nice. So your tool tightening fixture must be well secured. If you look at this, I can put my full weight into it and it does not move. Must be properly secured. Okay, so I've got the ER collet tool holder here. We've got our set screw tool holder here. So let's start with the set screw guy. So again, you want to use a torque wrench to tighten this. I just start out with my socket and I put it in there and then we're going to slide the end mill in. Now, before you put your tool in, you want to take a rag and make sure that there's no schmas in there. Because if there's anything on that far side of the wall, a chip or something, you're going to get run out. 
you want to make sure the shank of the tool is nice, clean, in good shape. Okay? Now, when you put the tool in, we want to insert the tool, and you can, you can see how tight a clearance this is. It's very tight clearance. We want to insert the tool, and then we want to just gently tighten this set screw by hand a little bit until we feel it grabbing that notch. Okay? So now, see how I'm kind of rotating it? I'm finding the flat and lining that flat up with the set screw. Now look, see how much play there is? Don't push the tool all the way in. Okay, so if we push the tool all the way in, now as we're running, it has the ability to pull out. Okay, remember the geometry of our end mill is going to want to make the tool pull out. So when you're tightening these, pull them out ahead of time as you snug the set screw. Okay, now it won't come out at all. Right? So then once we've got this, we're going to take our torque wrench. We're going to put it on the on our socket here. Okay, now this tool holder, again, the tool torque specs, you can look them up from your tooling manufacturer. This wants 45 foot pounds. Okay, so we're just going to put 45 on right until the click. Okay, so now this tool is properly secured into this tool holder. It's not going to pull out on you. So that's this type of tool holder. Now for the collets, again, cleanliness is important, especially if you do a lot of fine machining and you get a lot of fine chips. If you're using flood coolant, you get fine chips, you're going to want to get chips coming in these little tiny slots. And if you get a chip in this slot, when you go to tighten this down, that chip can bind this up and not cause this slot to collapse and then you can get uneven um, torque applied to the the shank of the tool okay so you want to make sure all these slots are all cleared out and there's no chips inside of them you also want to make sure that the taper inside the tool holder is nice and clean and no chips if you get a chip in there again you're gonna get run out and it's not gonna torque down properly you could get pull out so cleanliness is critical don't don't skip and don't you know spend the extra time here making sure it's clean first same thing with the nut we want to make sure the inside of this nut is clean so that as it's pushing down on this surface it's going to clamp evenly again we're trying to limit run out now ER collet holders a lot of them will have a stop screw so if you're using drill bits with your ER collet holders there's a threaded uh, set screw in the bottom of this that you can set. If you use those, you need to pull the pull stud out and loosen up that stop first, insert your tool, torque your, uh, your collet nut down, then you go back and set your stop screw and then put your pull stud back on. Don't torque one of these collet nuts with that stop, stop screw set because as this torques down, it kind of sucks the tool in just a little bit more. And if it's already hard up against the stop screw, it's going to mess up this torquing and settling real nice. Okay, so if you're using a stop screw in these, you got to pull out the pull stud, back it off, put your tool in, torque it, and then set your, your stop screw, and then put the pull stud back on and torque that. Okay? Now, when we're using these cowl holders, they got to snap in. Okay? So when you tighten this up, this collet should be pretty much flush with the surface of this nut. If it doesn't snap in and it tightens up like this, okay, where you got this gap, that's wrong. We don't want, we don't want to do that. It's not going to tighten up correctly. So you want them to snap in. So we're going to snap it in, and then we're just going to start it. Maybe. Always when the camera's running. There we go. Okay. So now as we tighten it up, you can see that the collet is sitting inside the very bottom or the very base of this nut. Okay. Now collet sizes, the shank always wants to be of equal size of the collet or slightly smaller. Don't put an oversized shank inside of a collet. That's poor practice. You want to use a collet that is of equal size or a little larger than the shank of the tool you're using. Okay. So this is a three-quarter collet. We're going to put a slitting saw in here. We're tooling up to make some Christmas gifts. 
So this has a weld on flat on it, so I could use this in the other tool holder, um, but I'm going to use a collet holder. There's not a lot of forces applied to this thing. It's only a little tiny sixteenth of an inch slitting saw. Uh, so we're going to put the tool in, and then we'll uh, just tighten it by hand at the depth we want. Now I'll go a little deeper. Okay. Now we'll take our torque wrench. We're set to 100 foot-pounds. Okay. Remember, we're going to be at a 90 degree angle. Okay. And we got to really put some muscle into it. Okay. So now, this tool's ready to go. And we know it's clean. It torqued down properly. You know, we used our torque wrench, so we got a repeatable torque. Knock on wood, I've never ever had a tool pull out yet. I hope this quick little video on collet holders and set screw holders, you know, helps just understand the basic principles and how we should use our collet holders so that we don't get pull out and we minimize our run out. Keep in mind that collet holders, ER collet holders, are pretty low in rigidity. They're, they're not the best tool for roughing and, you know, high speed you know, high horsepower milling. Set screw holders are significantly more rigid than a collet holder is, but again, they're not the best. Uh, milling holders, which are basically a, a collet type holder on steroids, and then hydraulic tool holders are really nice. They're more expensive, but they're a lot nicer. Basically, it's it's got hydraulic oil in it and a set screw, and you turn the screw to generate hydraulic pressure and that hydraulic pressure basically deforms the inside cavity of the tool holder to clamp the tool. Uh, those are pretty rigid. And then, you know, if you're starting to, you know, in a medium sized shop, you can go to what they call shrink fit holders. And shrink fit holders, by far, hands down, are, you know, the, rigid, the most rigid tool holder you can get. The problem with them is that the holders aren't that expensive. But the machine to put the tools in and out is. So you need a special machine that's a good couple of grand. And what it does is it heats the tool holder till it's you know cherry red hot and expands the tool holder out. You just drop the tool in, and then when it cools down, hence the name shrink fit, that tool is not going anywhere. Then to take the tool out, you put it back in the machine, it heats it up red hot, you rip the tool out real quick, and then you put the new tool in. So here's a little, little bit of uh, information on tool holders. So thanks for watching, and uh, we'll see you in the next video.